Oh my god, like I totally told him that Becky was oh, into oh, me and like it looks good kids. Kids. I like you, sorry. It makes me like it even more now. Uh, or was that destroy lonely? Uh that was destroy lonely. It looks good kids. Baby, I'm the fetch. Hey, before we begin, uh, follow L Twitter. The last one got banned because I posted Viper the Rapper. Follow L Instagram. I post La Meme. Sub to La Patreon. I need money. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh <laughs> I'm gonna have to forego the lore on this video. Saw we, I'm in a rush. Guys, I just found the greatest film of all time. And if this film does not change your life in the next five seconds, uh, you're stupid. You're just dumb. Every once in a blue moon, an emo movie comes out. And every time they do, they all fucking suck. We've watched two on this channel. One of them was Emo the Musical, an Australian black musical comedy. A totally inconsistent, unfunny, disingenuous piece of garbage. Minorities. And the other was American State. Starring Andy Balsack from Black Veil Bride. A totally inconsistent, unfunny, disingenuous piece of garbage. I reuse that voice clip because that's what the fucking movie is. It's genuinely one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's in the top 20 for sure. It's just in general really hard to make a movie about a subculture. For the subculture. With the exception of like the Repo Man. Any film that's dark and edgy and mysterious ends up being dog shit and dog shit and dog shit. Now that all the boring shit's out of the way, let's talk about- Wake up, Sophie. Christmas 2020, rapper Playboy Cardi released Whole Lotta Red, an album that aesthetically is heavily influenced by 80s era punk. Dude, they want to be Cardi so fucking bad, dude. Yeah. This new direction would completely transform Playboy Cardi to a complete underground disruptor. And before someone tells me, oh, Cardi isn't really punk, listen up, Gertrude, my ex from fucking high school. You know what else isn't punk? Sucking Michael's dick in the bathroom. You fucking goddamn Molgoth whore. What further helps this is Cardi's creation of the Opium Label, his own collective of rage trap rappers, one of the most popular being Bobby Sandamani III, better known by his stage name Destroy Lonely, known for his Deftones and Crystal Castles influenced sound. However, to promote his recent album If Looks Could Kill, he released something called Look Killa, a short film that he released for free on YouTube, the latest installment in this kind of alt scene movie genre, I guess. Now, some things to note. First of all, unlike Andy Balsack, Destroy Lonely is a fashion demon. In fact, he is is the fashion demon and a fashion killer too. Also, unlike Andy Beersack, who made American Satan with little to no narrative planning at all, Destroy Lonely, in contrast, is very strategic. In fact, everything he does is so strategic. Everything he does is for a reason. He does not need you, and he knows you don't need him. So already my expectations are just through the roof with this. I just gotta check this masterpiece out immediately. So first, interesting thing to note, this entire movie is shot in a four by three aspect ratio. This is, of course, to preserve the integrity of Bobby Wardell Sandamani III's creative vision. Our film opens with this woman in a dorky sweater and glasses, having a nice night out at the bar. We're then briefly introduced to this woman, who is kind of a bitch, and she briefly scoff laughs at the main character. <laughs> The bartender then tries hitting on her, but she's like, ew, icky. I also love how the bartender asks her what she's going to drink, and she simply replies, a beer. I'll have a beer. They gonna use beer for that? Now, there are many different kinds of beers. Bud Light, Blue Moon, Blue Ribbon. However, this character simply orders a beer. Well, what kind of beer? This shows us that this character lacks a kind of identity, to the point where she doesn't even know what kind of beer she likes. We then get a shot of Mr. Santa Monty the Third himself, before meeting this bitch who has an attitude, who's best friends with the main character. She then approaches That's Mr. Destroy Lonely and attempts to hit on him. And man, the dialogue in this scene. Wow. Hi, Lone. How are you guys, like, so cool? We also get a brief cameo of Ken and Carson, another opium member. Who just said, ooh. He looking a little too far right now, Ken. Could this be teasing a Ken Carson spinoff film? Also worth noting, Destroy Lonely's character is literally named Lone. As in, Destroy Lonely. The one white woman that insults the nerdy girl. Well, she's also flabbergasted by Destroy Lonely's looks. What is she anyway? What is she wearing? 
this is very interesting. Of course, as we all know, Destroy Lonely is so strategic. Everything he does is for a reason. And he brilliantly showcases that by showing off symbolism in this scene. Notice the woman's clothing. Notice how her fit is very bright, almost white even. It gives her this prominent angelic look to her. However, she's also a fucking bitch. And therefore, very much imperfect. However, to quote Destroy Lonely, all black fit, that's the perfect attire. Yeah, all black fit, that's the perfect attire. And even in real life, Lone follows this philosophy. There's also a shortage of black dye and we can't produce black clothes anymore. Whoa, 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 I'm going naked. <laughs> Is Mr. Lone making a commentary on morality? That people often pretend to have a moral high ground, but yet they're absolutely superficial? Anyways, Lone walks up to the Asian girl and we get some of the best dialogue I've ever heard. All right, so Thanks, I uh, actually made it myself. For real? That makes me like it even more now. Boom! Damn! Damn, this guy's got opium rids! This bitch gonna be more fucking Noah's Ark pretty soon. God damn! Actually, let's analyze the story of Lonely's rizzing technique real quick. First of all, walk up to some random Asian bitch at a bar. Make sure you're wearing the all black fit as that is the perfect attire. Next up, compliment her clothes. After she gives any random fact about them, reply by mumbling and shit. Make it incredibly obvious you want to have sex with them. Make sure that any answer you give her for any further questions is completely incomprehensible. It's very really fun and really cool question. She will find you a lot more mysterious because she won't know what the fuck you're saying. You'll then want to leave, number completely unacquired. That way she'll be able to magically stalk you and find your fucking address or something. Of course, I haven't used this technique myself. Uh, I don't really talk to women. The one other girl then walks up to the other girl and is like, Oh my god, you were talking to Lone? Oh my god. I saw something about him that just makes me want to just take off all his clothes. Uh, true, 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 true. The one white bitch then walks out to her car and gets in her car. But then she's locked in her car and fucking destroy lonely comes on the radio. It's the fucking meme song too, of course. <laughs> So the white girl is murdered by way of destroy lonely by this mysterious man in a mask with the murder being reported on everywhere the next day But you gotta be honest bro. This might be the perfect way to go out going out listening to glow Come on bro like bro. She's literally dying lit gang. Also the Asian girl has destroy lonely on her phone. God I wish that were me It's also revealed the murderer wears this mask over his face And if you want to cop this look it's gonna cost you a hundred and fifteen dollars on loans website Man being the fashion demon is really expensive, huh? The Asian girl then texts Lone to come over. You know what? This is the position I would be in if I were texting Destroy Lonely. Hey, hey Can Can. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you naked? <laughs> yeah. Bro, oh, y'all are weird. The Asian girl's bestie then comes over uninvited. I know, and Charlotte of all people? I mean, she was such an angel. Once again, Lone alludes to Charlotte, the girl who was murdered, as being an angelic figure. This continues to destroy Lonely's amazing attention to detail, questioning the nature of humanity, and how he put both a physical and emotional facade over our faces. Charlotte may be referred to as an angel, but in actuality, she was a demon. A fashion demon. When I went for a run this morning, there was police everywhere. Wow, incredible reference to Deus Sex era video game voice acting. I would critique her performance here, but I think this was intentional. I'm not sure what it means, but as we all know, Destroy Lonely is so strategic. Everything he does is for a reason. And I mean, he's the top floor boss. Everything he's made is so amazing. And he just can't change that level of consistency. Even though film is a whole different medium from rap music, never ever would Lone change on his fan base and release a subpar non-esoteric product. Speaking of Lone, he just arrived on the scene and go! Damn! Once again, Lone is committed to an amazing ideology. All black fit, that's the perfect attire. When Lone says in his music, I just spent my money on guns, clothes, and drugs, I believe the clothes part at least. Damn. Let's look back at Emo the Musical. Notice how fucking trash some of these fits are. What is this fit? Red? What the fuck? Purple? Whole lot of purple? This is where I don't mess with y'all. This guy dares to have the word lonely on his shirt and trash the name of my boyfriend. Whoa. I'm now this character's fit is a lot more of a step up, it's a lot more opium, a fuck with the chain, the jacket. One problem though, the fuck are those shoes? My boy got on the Spongebob squeaky boots fit. Now look at this, destroy lonely and luck killer. Look at this scene. Perfect black fit, beautiful chain, and the shoes? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's Rick, all right. I think we should also study both Lone's acting and Riz abilities in this scene. Check out what he does the moment he walks in. Hey, what's up? What's up, babe? 
How you doing? Notice how they're not even officially dating in the movie yet. They've had one scene together so far. But honestly, this teaches me something. The moment you arrive at a girl's house, the first thing you gotta do is put your hands all around her and call her baby while doing it. However, if she does the same thing to you, don't emotionally respond. Wow, I love your parents. What material is this? Just regular pace. Next, what you gotta do is act like the driver from Drive 2011. Only, unlike Ryan Gosling, you've never seen a movie in your life. You heard about the girl that died? <laughs> D no, Mr. Lonely, I did not hear about what it. What other insightful information do you have for me about this murder? Yeah, this is what you see. <laughs> Shit, I know about this rain down the street. Man, fuck Brendan Fraser. This is the real performance right here. It's Mr. Sandamani the third. Did they get more destroy lonely music? Oh, fuck yeah! Man, imagine if Emo the musical had destroy lonely music playing. That'd be so much better. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> then encounter these guys. A bunch of boys just fucking around. All while the song Chris Paul by Destroy Lonely plays in the background. Meanwhile, this guy's all like, you wanna go to the rave tonight? But this other guy's all like, I still listen to that whack ass shit. Man, that's right. We only listen to Destroy Lonely out here. Plus, you don't want the monster to come get you. Well, if the monster is Destroy Lonely, I actually do want him to come get me. So the guy leaves to go to the rave anyway. Which, by the way, you, all white fit, that's the imperfect attire. Which is why he's very quickly killed by the look killer. Uh -huh, I wonder who it could be. I love how the film so far has not revealed who the evil serial killer could possibly be. Really adds an air of mystery to the story. <laughs> Cut to a party where we meet Destroy Lonely again. And wow, what a way to present this character. Now, remember American Satan and how poorly Andy Beersack was presented in it? He so clearly wants to be opium. Sadly, a lot of his pitches doesn't have any ricks on it or anything. Not even any reps. You don't know about the panda buy spreadsheet, dumbass? You know, at least put on the fucking walk bit. <laughs> now, my boy Lone, he's into fashion, he's into swag, and your sister. So you know, for this movie, he's gotta pull out all the stops in his clothing fashion. And yeah! Look at his fit in the scene. Literally all black fit. The perfect, the perfect attire. Oh. Real talk, I love how he just kind of walks around like a little Death Note character. He then takes this one girl outside, but then kills her to the tune of Raver by Destroy Lonely. The Asian girl then walks into the party, but then also encounters Destroy Lonely. And they both decide to leave because parties fucking suck. And they both leave, but oh look, it's the fashion killer's mask. So that was Luck Killer, and you know... Every once in a while, a movie comes out that just transcends reality. A film so perfect that it changes the world around you. It changes the way that narratives are told, and Look Killa by Destroy Lonely is one of them. Within a measly 13 minutes, Mr. Bobby Wardell Sandamani III creates what I can only describe as a new gold narrative standard. An emotionally reinvigorating piece of post-postmodern psychological horror, all crammed once again within only 13 minutes. Mr. Lone's performance is incredible. Really pulling from the same place Brendan Fraser did in The Whale. Destroy Lonely separates the line between performer and character. From the way he wears an all-black fit, the perfect attire, to his rising abilities, he truly proves himself to be the fashion demon, both on screen and off screen. And of course, the music is just beautiful, employing tracks from If Looks Could Kill. An album so good, Anthony Fantano gave it a 10, but he I forgot to put the zero in it. This film made me feel like a deeply punished wolf, a dark and tortured creature of the night, riding on my motorcycle into the distance, staring at my wolf self in the mirror. I stared at my dark wolf self, the abyss of my blackened heart, and I became a top floor boss. Overall, this short film is uh, perfect. Really makes me a massive fashion demon. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna ride my motorcycle into the distance. Goodbye now.
hot in the summer sun Yeah, we could fight, but the feeling's gone I try to find the words, but they never come I can still see you on the lawn Hey, laying outside in the summer sun Hey, I'm with a dark-skinned girl on a Sunday That's that Black Sabbath She put them ones all down on a Hyundai And she had a habit yeah, that's the facts, yeah. Hold up. Alright, y'all gotta stop this shit. I ain't gonna lie. These <laughs> keep throwing this shit on my motherfucking stage. This shit gonna make me mad if they don't stop on okay. camera. Next phone to come on this stage, I'ma break that bitch. I'm gonna just vibe out and listen to this shit. Hold up. I just wanna fuck a dude. This coming so sticky like glue. When you're trying to sleep and you hear the beeps of soap and suds But the sounds of washing hands were not preceded by a flush Trying to confuse the order they choose, the questions they need created But you can rest assured the things you've heard your roommate just mad. 